Hi there, in today's video, we'll be creating a portfolio website like this in under 15 minutes to showcase our data science portfolio. And we'll also be deploying our website for free using a custom domain if you own one. Many of you have probably done really amazing projects. You might have put some cool projects up on your GitHub, written some articles here and there, or published your dashboards on Tableau Public and so on. But one little problem with that is that those projects are scattered on different platforms on the internet Internet, which makes it a bit inconvenient for you to showcase them to other people. One perfect solution for this, and it's exactly what we'll be tackling today, is to create a portfolio website where you can tie everything together in one central place. Showing who you are and maybe telling about your most weird hobbies. It helps people know you better and therefore it's a very good way to build credentials and even a personal brand. So today we'll be using Stackbit to build our portfolio website. No coding is required. You might be thinking, what? You're a nerd and you don't know how to code a website. Well, I used to develop my own website, for example, this watercolor slash tech blog, very weird combination, using the static site generator Gatsby.js. As much as I love coding and designing websites, I quickly realized how time consuming it is to build and customize things to my liking. And I also generally find it uninspiring to write blog posts in Markdown. So that's why I turned to Stackbit. So what the heck is Stackbit? It's basically a website builder, but a quite different kind of website builder compared to Squarespace or Wix. It provides web developers with a visual tool to quickly build and edit a Jamstack website. And this visual tool also helps developers and non-developers work together easily. Even though this tool is made more for developers and you can certainly choose to do all the coding if you like, the good thing is there are also a few really nice pre-designed themes that we can use. And this is what we'll be doing today. Let's get started. All right, so let's head over to Stackbit website. Then we can go to get started. So as you can see here, this is a comment that you can use to start a local development environment if you want to coach your website yourself. However, for this simple portfolio website that we'll be creating today, we'll just start with a pre-designed theme. So here we have a couple of uh, different themes here. I'll go ahead and choose this theme. So if you haven't had an account yet, at some point you have to sign up, but I already have an account so I'll just go ahead and start my project. So here we can name our project. Let's say this is my website. Then we'll click on create site. It will take a couple of seconds when you first load the website. This is our website. So this is all the code for the website and this is based on Next.js. And if you want to, you can even transfer all the code to your GitHub repo. So this is pretty nice. You can deploy your website anywhere you want. But today we are not going to tinker with any of the code. We will just visually edit our website. So this is the website that we have. Let's start editing our website. So here I have the title, I will just change it to my name. And here we have the navigation bar. And here we have the adventures. Uh, let's see what it is. The adventure is basically the blog posts. So I will go ahead and change this to projects, for example. So this section would be where I write my, about my projects. Here we have the uh, contact, say this is contact me. I feel like I don't particularly like this hero section so much, so I'll go ahead and try to replace it with something else. Here you can see the add section button here. Click on it and then you will see that there are a bunch of different components or the sections that you can choose from. If we go to the hero, so this is the current hero section that we have. I feel like this one is a bit better, so I'll choose it and then I can delete this uh, section. Yeah, now we can go ahead and adjust this hero section. Here we can say, welcome to my portfolio website. Then here we can say, yeah, a few words about ourselves. <laughs> uh, what should I say? Data nerd, learning, creativity. The URL of this one is blog. So I want to direct this button to the uh, blog page on our website. I will edit this as well. This will see project. We can also change our picture. Let me upload. Okay, I have a portrait photo. 
looks good. If you have a landscape photo instead, you can just put it in the photo editor in your computer and then you can crop your picture to this kind of size. So this looks already pretty good, right? Let's preview it. We can even publish it. You can see that this is a default domain of our website. So later in this video, we'll be connecting our website to a custom domain that we own. And here, this is the uh, publish button. We can click on it and then the website will be deployed to this default domain. Now, while waiting for our website to be published, we can continue editing our website. In this hero section, I also want to add a few links to, for example, my LinkedIn profile and my GitHub profile as well. So let's click on this little plus button here and you can choose to add here either another button or a link. So I'll choose the link. So here we have the default learn more and so I can direct this link to an URL. We can just copy this URL, paste it here. We can add an icon here. So here we have a LinkedIn icon. Now, in a very similar fashion, we will go ahead and create a, another link to our GitHub profile. So here we will have our URL, which is our GitHub profile. I'll paste it here. And in the styling, we will add an icon, which is our GitHub, which is here, and show this icon. And here we can remove this label, learn more. This looks very nice. And now we can go ahead and edit other sections of our website as well. So here's the quote uh, section. So maybe we can choose this color to make it popular a bit more. So these colors uh, we can edit in our styling uh, section here. The global styling, if you go to the color palette, you can see that this is the color palette that is used at the moment but we can certainly choose a different color for our website. A very nice website for this is the cool color. Yeah, coolers.co. It has all kinds of different colors. So we can start the generator and here are the different kind of color combination that we can choose from. This is pretty handy if you want to select a different kind of color palette. Now we want to have a different quote. This one is pretty nice. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. I'll just do this one and uh, copy to our quote section. Here we can say this is from uh, Albert Einstein. And here we can uh, basically remove this. The next section is basically the posts section. So basically the blog section. Here we have two blog posts here. We will go ahead and edit them in a bit. Here we can say something like uh, recent project. And here we can say um, this is a CO project instead. Here are the blog posts that are default in this theme, but we'll go ahead and uh, delete them and create our own blog post because they have at the moment like different slots and we don't want to use these slots. So let's duplicate this one. The first one is probably Python dashboard and this is the default blog post on our website. We can change the picture here to a picture of our project. And here we can say interactive of CO2 emission using panel HP plot. Uh, we can select different dates, so we can choose maybe today. And then we can edit the content of our blog post. Here we have different kind of header here. We can say uh, motivation and we can even embed a picture. Then uh, we can even create a quote. I love data visualization. And uh, if you select the markdown here, if you toggle on this, you can see that this is the markdown format of our blog post. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not very big fan of writing blog posts in this kind of fashion. Let's go back to the home here. We can remove this blog post. And we can add another post here. Um, we say existing. We'll select this post that we just created. Yeah, the picture is now still default picture. Um, we will select our own picture about the project. So yeah, this is our blog post. This one also, we'll go ahead and remove it. And we can add another blog post here. Let's duplicate this one. A suicidal landscape. We will change this picture to uh, this one. And here we can say the name of the project is visualizing the suicidal cases uh, in the Netherlands in 2018. And yes, so we can add post here existing. Um, we can add this one, change the picture. Okay, this is very nice. The keep reading link label now at the moment is a joint adventure. So we can say here probably read more and here um, in the styling. 
We can even change to different kinds of arrangements. So at the moment it is a two columns grid, but we can also choose to have a list instead. So let's see what it looks like. So this is the list format, but I'll just keep the two columns grid. I think it looks much better. And I can probably also promote my YouTube channel. I also make videos on YouTube. We can also change this picture to another picture. A very nice website for royalty-free picture is Unsplash. So you can search for anything, for example, YouTube orientation landscape. Let's say I want to have this photo. Then I could go ahead and select this photo. So um, add background image. Oops, I chose a different image for my laptop. Uh, I just leave it. And in the about section, we can also go ahead and adjust this about section. We can add a picture of ourselves, for example. And as I mentioned earlier, we can also create a whole new page for our website. So to do that, we will click on the plus button here. We will create, for example, add a new empty page and we can select the slug for this page, a gallery, for example. And this is the empty page that we have and we can add different sections here for example media gallery to create a link to this page uh, we can uh, add something in the navigation pane for example we can create a link we will have the url here we can say this will direct to the gallery page we can have also the label here is gallery rather yeah so now we have this page and if we uh, click on it then this will be our new page. And to publish the website, you can see here, this is all the changes that we have made. And we can go ahead and click on the publish button. So on Namecheap or GoDaddy, you can buy a domain very cheaply. For example, I bought this domain name conscientiousgeek.com for like $9. So domain names are usually very cheap if you don't have the same name as Elon Musk, for example. Now we'll go ahead and connect our website to this domain name. So if you click on the clock icon over here and go to the domain tab, you see the steps we need to take to connect our website to our own domain name. So we basically follow the instructions on this page we need to add two records to our DNS settings. The first one is a CNAME record and the second one is an A record. So for the CNAME record, we just go ahead and copy paste our current uh, project domain name here. And for the A record, we'll enter a value field uh, specified in the instructions, which is 75265. I realized later that I should replace Stackbit with Netlify on the domain name here because the website is actually hosted on Netlify. So don't forget to change it for your own case as well. Now you can go ahead and save those records. The next step is to simply to enter a custom domain in this box and click on save. Now it usually takes an hour or two for those uh, DNS changes to propagate through the internet's global domain name service system. So please be patient and check the status again after a few hours. Just a side note, if you get stuck at this step for a very long time, then you should try to remove and fill in your domain name again in this box. This has helped me before. So this is our final website, which looks pretty decent and it's also connected to our custom domain, which is really, really nice. The next step is to promote your website and let people know about your project. Whenever you write about a new project on your website, make a tweet about it and add a link to your website. You can also write posts on LinkedIn as well to share with your professional network, which I usually feel too embarrassed to do. Another way to promote your blog which I like is to import your blog post into Medium. It's very easy to do. All you need to do is to enter the URL of your blog post and click on import. Then you can further customize your post on Medium and you may notice that at the end of the post there's an automatic line that says this post is originally published on your website which is really great because people who read your article can also go to your website if they want to. So in this video I showed you one of the most simple and low budget ways to create a website but there are are many other options as well you can choose from. The most basic way is to build a simple HTML CSS file. On HTML5 up website, for example, you can find a bunch of nice templates for this, but this option is usually only suitable for websites that have only a few pages and not suitable for blogging because everything
every time you make a new page, you'll have to copy paste the whole HTML together with the header, footer, and other components on the page, which is very cumbersome. So the solution that people often turn to is to use static site generators like Hugo, Gatsby, and jQuery. They are free and open source tools to build websites, and I love them. But they often require quite some knowledge of web development, and it can take a lot of coding to make a website decent looking, even if you just want to customize a pre-designed theme. On the other end of the spectrum, we have no-code website builders that offer visual editing interface like Wix and Squarespace. They are very convenient, but they are not free. You typically pay 10 to 20 bucks a month for using the theme and for the hosting service, which is unnecessary in my opinion, because you can technically host your portfolio website for zero dollar using GitHub page or Netlify. So it's totally your core what best fits your experience and budget. Having built this amazing portfolio website that you can use for data science blogging, now you can focus on doing projects. If you are looking for project ideas, you can check out my previous video over here about how I find project ideas and also check out the portfolio project playlist on my channel for some end-to-end -end project tutorials in R and Python. Again, if you got any value from this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already for more data science related content. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.